The market is down 25% from its highs, with some stocks down 50% or more. Top investors like Manish Pavarai have been patiently waiting for the opportunities we are seeing today. In this video, I'll go through the five methods Pabrai will be using to load up on investments and some opportunities I see in the market today. Hi, my name is Mize. I'm a hedge fund analyst turned entrepreneur. And on this channel, I share the research I'm doing to build the best investment strategies. So first and foremost are the PE of one companies. What we want to look for is the hidden PE of ones, which means they are a PE of one, but they don't show up as such on a screen. Investing in these is how Manish and even Warren Buffett started their investing journeys, buying companies for well below what they were worth. Manish likes to call these companies PEs of one, where you are likely to make your investment back within one year through the company's actual earnings. You might be wondering, how is this guy finding these companies? Stocks with a PE of one usually have more problems than they're worth. For example, you might have an uninterested owner who owns the majority of the company. If you would rather spend time vacationing in Bali on the company's dime instead of maximizing shareholder value, there's not much you can do about it. Every now and then though, you might find a real bargain. For instance, in 2003, Pabrai found a steel company called called Ipsco that was selling for $45 a share. It had $15 a share in cash on the books with zero debt and guaranteed cash flows of $15 a share for the next two years. Essentially, you're getting the future cash flows and the assets of Ipsco for free. But how, you might ask? It was unclear if Ipsco would make any money after two years. There was no foresight into their earnings after that. Given this uncertainty, investors were staying away from the stock. The thing was, it was just uncertainty. People still wanted to buy steel two years later, and Ipsco was able to build up another half a billion dollars in backlog for year three. Manish cashed out multiples by buying Ipsco at the height of this uncertainty. These kinds of opportunities are not that rare either. This year, the company Harbor Diversified offered a similar proposition. Harbor Diversified manages Air Wisconsin. United Airlines has been contracting out their regional flights to Wisconsin Air, giving Harbor solid contractual income. Recently, United ended that contract, causing for Harbor to trade below liquidation value of around $2.70. Since then, Harbor has signed a five-year agreement with American Airlines. The details of that agreement are unclear and will likely not be public until the next quarterly report. Despite their announcement, Harbor still trades near liquidation value. If the deal with American is similar to Harbor's previous deal with United, the company would be worth upwards of five or six dollars. As you can see, it's very similar to the Ipsco situation with Manish Pabrai. Yet again, you're buying a company with very little downside, but a lot more upside. Next, we've got companies with massive moats that could be run by idiots. These companies are pretty self-explanatory. Here's how Buffett and Munger describe these companies. Buy a stock in a company that's so good that an idiot can run it, because sooner or later, one will. With the whole market down, there are plenty of companies that have durable competitive advantages that are down along with the rest of the market, despite no major changes to their business. Companies like this include Coca-Cola, Gillette, Visa, and Google. These companies have such deep moats, you couldn't imagine switching to a competitor in most cases. I mean, just ask yourself, just how badly will Google have to screw up for you to switch to Microsoft's Bing. The moat at Coca-Cola is even deeper. Coca-Cola could get into the movie business and the financials wouldn't budge. My favorite example of a stock in this category is Google. The stock is down 35% from a high of $150 as growth has slowed amid the weakening economy. But the chances are Google will continue to grow at a rate of 10 to 20% annually as a recession clears, given the combination of high quality businesses they own. They just have so many levers to improve. Just think about it. You've got Google search, you've got YouTube, Google Cloud, Android, G Suite, and many, many more. Pair this growth with growing margins over the last few years as Sundar Pichai and Ruth Porat have cut down on unnecessary costs, and you've got a multi-bagger return on your hands. Next, we've got what Pabrai calls focused mousetraps, companies that are just like the Coca-Colas and Gillettes we were just talking about, but without solid management at the helm of these businesses, they would go astray. Companies like this include Costco, Amazon, Geico, and McDonald's. Just take a look at Costco versus its competitors. There's a reason you'll never see a Sam's Club or BJ's located next to a Costco warehouse, because Costco beats them out of the water on almost every customer-facing metric. Costco management's 
unrelenting focus on providing the lowest prices to his customers to the point of selling many items at a loss sets them apart from the pack. If they're able to hold on to this focus and lead in customer satisfaction, they've got much more growth ahead of them as they continue to expand internationally. Next, we have turnaround situations. In any difficult market, you'll have many stocks that get beaten down to what looks like the point of no return. Some of these will make miraculous recoveries to reach new highs. Sam Zell's investment in mission insurance perfectly encapsulates the turnaround strategy. Sam is called the grave dancer. He dances on the graves of companies that are left for dead. And uh, if you get a chance to invest with Sam, generally speaking, it's gonna go really well. He bought this insurance company with $630 million in losses for around $30 million, about seven to eight years after bankruptcy. He knew he could use these losses to offset the income from a profitable business for massive tax savings. So he then took these NOLs or net operating losses and went searching for a company that would generate enough cash to use up the losses. He ended up buying a barge or shipping company. Unfortunately, this barge business also went bankrupt and now they have had $800 million in NOLs. Instead of giving up, Sam decided to double down and purchase a waste to energy production company. This is a company that essentially burns your garbage for energy, essentially turning trash into cash. Now, he needed even more money to pull this off, so he issued debt, tanking the price of his stock to as low as $1. Manish Pabrai came in and bought it around $9 and doubled his money from there. This company went on to be a 40 bagger for Sam Zell, or a 40x return on his original investment. Given the downside inherent in companies teetering at the edge of bankruptcy, the potential returns can be massive. An activist investor investing heavily in turnarounds right now is Cliff Sosa, with 30% plus annualized returns over the last 10 or so years, he's an amazing investor with a great track record. But his largest positions are down 90% or more, and he's responded by doubling down betting on a turnaround. His top investment is the fast-growing online used car retailer Carvana. This company has been doubling every year for the last few years, until now. As rates have risen, used car sales have plummeted. This dynamic paired with Mr. Market's move away from unprofitable tech companies has left Carvana out in the cold. Carvana needs to rapidly cut costs to survive. Failure to do so will jeopardize the company's ability to pay the interest on their $6 billion in debt. Now, all those things sound really, really tough. As a result, the stock is down 90% or more. The thing is though, if the company is able to cut costs to reach profitability, the stock could 10x closer to its previous highs. Having cut $90 million in costs just this last quarter, with much more to go, Carvana looks like the ultimate grave dancer stock. I'm looking at it very closely. Next, we've got what Manish Pabrai calls spawners. These are companies that are able to stay at the cutting edge by spawning new businesses over and over again. Manish Pabrai aspires to eventually just have a portfolio of apex spawners because their potential for massive long-term returns is huge. His current favorite spawner stock is Tencent, a company that has been firing on all cylinders, growing at a rapid clip in China with years of growth ahead. I've actually done a whole video on the spawner framework and why Manish is going all in on this approach above all others. You can check it out right here. Thanks for watching. Have a good one.